Right, so there's a new article here from Sky Sports, and as always, I'll put that in the description box for you all to have a read. And before you do that, click that thumbs up button for me, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you haven't done so already, come on man, it's brilliant over here. What's wrong with you? Do it. Right. So anyway, this article has a statement from Anthony Joshua, where he's talked about the potential of him fighting Tyson Fury. Now, if you guys cast your minds back to two, maybe three months ago, when Tyson Fury was on about having a comeback, and it's before he fought Sefer Seferi, and I was saying that I don't want Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury just yet. What I want is Anthony Joshua at his best and Tyson Fury at his best. So no excuses for the loser, okay? And I've always said it, and, I, and I'll always maintain it, that a tip-top on form Tyson Fury and a tip-top on form Anthony Joshua is a 50-50 fight for me. For me, I can only see it going one of two ways. Anthony Joshua win by knockout or Tyson Fury wins by points. I can't see Joshua beating Tyson on points and I can't see Tyson um, knocking out Joshua. But anyway, um, a lot of people saying that um, this is a good fight uh, for Wilder vs Tyson Fury. And on paper, of course it is. It's a fantastic fight on paper. But as I've been saying for quite some time, it's too early for Tyson Fury. Look at what happened with David Hay when David Hay took out three years. Look at the shell of his former self that came back. Now, he could mow through a couple of bums, such as Mark Demori and Arnold Zhejai. That was easy work for him. But as soon as he stepped up even just a little bit to Tony Bellew, and no disrespect to Tony Bellew, and he'll be the first person to tell you, a inform David Hay at his peak, Tony Bellew doesn't have much of a chance. But the layoff, and of course injuries and in that that didn't help as well, showed that um, a long layoff does not help in the slightest. It really, really doesn't. Another example would be Billy Joe Saunders. He only had a year out, and his first fight back to defend his WBO World Middleweight title against Arthur Akabov, he looked terrible. Absolutely terrible in that fight. And he was lucky to get that decision, in all truth. So, the whole absence for Tyson Fury for me, it is an issue in itself, but if you throw in the fact that he put on so much weight and had the mental depression and breakdown and was doing cocaine and whatever else, plus he had the UCAD and the British Boxing Board of Control on his back, um, suspending him, didn't know if he was ever gonna fight again. All this played a huge, huge part. So for him to come back just in itself is one hell of an achievement. It really is. And I was okay with him taking on Safari Safari. I know a lot of people weren't, but for me, I was. I was okay just get back in the ring, just to get back under the lights again and give it a go. And he did it. It was a bit of a clown show, let's be honest, but Tyson Fury did that on purpose. He was just having fun. And against Pianetta as well, not exactly a great fight, but I was okay with that kind of fight for a second fight back. And ideally, what I wanted Tyson Fury to have was another couple more fights to gradually move back in. I'm not saying do several fights, not at all. I was talking like four, maybe five, and then take on Joshua. This was pretty much my thinking at the time. Now, all this was long before Wilder and Fury was even thought about. Okay, so people say, well, why is it that you're moaning about this fight? And it, it, it's for that reason. It's all advantage Wilder, and Wilder's taking full advantage of it. I don't blame him for doing it. If you're going to get Tyson Fury, then get him now. That's probably the best way to put it, right? But ultimately, this is for me, this is what Wilder's always done. You know, he's always taken the easier routes. He's never stepped up, and a chance to earn huge money against Anthony Joshua, he turned it down, $15 million, and he could be fighting Joshua next. But he didn't want to do it because there's no date and venue. That was his latest excuse. Then he agrees to fight Tyson Fury, and six weeks later, we're still waiting on a date and venue. But yet, these same people who were saying, nobody signs a fight for um, any kind of fight if there's no date and venue, this is... Ridiculous. How can Joshua expect Wilder to sign if there's no date and venue? Even though we knew it was 100% going to be at the Prince of Ballet Stadium, Cardiff, Wales, it could not be at Wembley because the pay-per-view in the US would clash with the Triple G one, okay? In other words, it would be this weekend if it was going to be that way. So that was never going to happen. They wanted pay-per-view in the US, which is why they said end of October, early November. So you're talking like a two-week difference. Either way, he didn't want to do that. So... 
Going back onto the question of Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury, as I said way back then, I don't want to see that fight. I don't want anybody to give any kind of excuses that Joshua beat Fury before Fury was ready. I didn't want that at all, and I stand by that. Even now, if he was to take on um, Joshua right now, I'd be criticising Joshua for taking this fight. Hence the reason why I'm criticising Wilder, because he should have the same morals. Anyway, Anthony Joshua has confirmed exactly what it is that I said, that the reason that um, Joshua was ignoring um, Tyson Fury, and Tyson Fury calling him out all this time and keep on mentioning his name, was because Anthony Joshua, and I said it on the video back, back, um, back then, maybe what, two, three months ago, I think it was, that he didn't want Tyson Fury right now. But if Tyson Fury keeps pushing it, of course he'll take it and then just blitz him out. That's not a problem. But ideally, Joshua wants him at his peak. He wants him when he's at his best. He doesn't want people saying, but you mowed through a shell of a Tyson Fury. You could never beat a prime Tyson Fury. And he's reiterated that in this comment or in this um, article on Sky Sports. So this is what Anthony Joshua had to say. That's why I wouldn't fight Fury now, because I want Fury at his best. So there is no claim to say that I took him out when he was not at his best. You know, for me, I've only said that I will fight Fury at his best. I said him, let, let him get over his issues, let him come back and get fit again. But if he thinks he's ready, he's ready. But me being a fighter, I think you need learning fights after three years layoff. Klitschko had 17 month layoff before he fought me because Fury pulled out twice. People say he's had a 17 month layoff. He worked the same. So what is Fury going to do after a three year layoff? It shows that people have concerns about people having that amount of time out of the ring. But you know what? Good luck to Wilder, good luck to Fury. It's taken them a long time to actually have meaningful fights. As I said, they've been professional nine going on 10 years and I think they're finally having a fight because I think they realize that from myself, they have looked across the other side of the pond and said, well, this young kid has come up being in meaningful fights and he's gaining the respect of the boxing public. Maybe we need to do the same. Wilder just fought Ortiz. That was a close scrape. And Fury three years ago was the one to fight Vladimir Klitschko. It took them a long time and now they're finally fighting each other. For me, nine to 10 years as a professional, I'll be thinking about retirement. I've gone in and taken the risks instead of nine to 10 years to come and say, hang on a minute, I haven't had a, a defining fight. That's not the way I want to go. But each to their own, for me, that's not the way I want to go out. That's what brought the respect of the heavyweight division back to the UK. It's the fact that we've all stepped up. But whoever wins out of Wild and Fury will come and fight me. God willing, I beat Alexander Povetkin for a chance to prove themselves. So they realize you've got to have the right fight and stiff competition in order to put your name in a position to fight the toughest challenges out there. I just think without my name in it, them guys wouldn't have fought each other. So that is Anthony Joshua's statement. So apologies for a couple of parts there. I was getting a little bit tongue tied. I think Sky Sports maybe put it down wrong or my eyes to brain isn't working, I don't know. Anyway, so you, you pretty much get what it is that Joshua's saying there. After three years out, Tyson Fury needs some fights back to get himself ready. But if he thinks he's ready, then good luck to him fighting Wilder. Now I know, and you guys know as well, that Joshua does believe Wilder's gonna beat him as probably 90% of the boxing public who know anything about Tyson Fury and his time off and history for fighters who's taken a long time off as well. But I mean, I do have to disagree with Joshua a little bit on this one, where he said that these guys have been pro for nine to 10 years and they haven't had meaningful fights. But for me, Tyson Fury has had a meaningful fight. He took on Vladimir Klitschko. So that was a meaningful fight. That was a defining fight. Tyson Fury didn't get the credit that he deserved. Was it because of his antics after the fight? Maybe. Was it a case of that um, you know, Tyson Fury kept calling Vladimir Klitschko old and way past it and this is easy work? So of course, when he beat him easy work, people go, okay, fine, you were right. He was old. Maybe it was that. But I think a lot of it was down to the fact that it was a lackluster fight. But hey, listen, to win, you don't have to win in style or you don't have to win in a dramatic fight. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go life and death. If you can go through that fight without getting punched, then more power to you, right? But I think a lot of it was down to Tyson Fury's antics after the fight with all the 
homophobic slurs and the Bible preaching and all this kind of thing. Whereas for me, I found like, like um, I know some of it quite amusing and I knew why he was doing it. He, um, he was doing it to get himself in the headlines, but a lot of people took real umbrage to what it was that Tyson Fury was doing. So maybe he didn't get his credit for that one. But as I said, for me, that was a defining fight. Wilder, yes, Wilder hasn't had a defining fight yet. And, and it, okay, so he's beat Luis Ortiz, but I think, again, that one, Luis Ortiz, what's he ever done? He's never beaten anybody of any great note, has he? He's never been a world champion. He never achieved anything as an amateur. So Luis Ortiz only had this reputation as a boogeyman because Tyson Fury said about it. And people say, well, Joshua avoided Ortiz. As I've told you guys hundreds of times, he didn't avoid Luis Ortiz. He had to face Pulev, his RBF mandatory. His uh, Pulev got changed to Takam because of Pulev uh, pulled out, but it was still for the IBF. Then he had to defend it against the WBA, which was Luis Ortiz. And he said to Luis Ortiz, I will fight you next. I'll give you a contract. You can sit there and wait for me, or you can come fight on my undercard or go fight somebody else. You, you, you can do whatever it is that you want to do. He chose to go fight Wilder. He ended up failing a PED test, unfairly, rightfully so, who knows. But that's why that fight didn't happen. So for people to say that Joshua avoided all tears, that's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, Wilder hasn't had a meaningful fight as such. Um, Luis Ortiz is probably his most meaningful one, that's for sure. Maybe outside the very first Devern fight, potentially. But Again, as I said, Luis Ortiz hasn't really beaten anybody of any great note. Now, that's not to say Luis Ortiz is not a dangerous opponent or he's not an elite fighter because he certainly is. And he handled himself great in that wild fight. I had him winning up until the uh, 10th round when he got stopped. So, and yes, Wilder did get a little bit of a favor, albeit not a great favor. It was an extra few valuable seconds, which was out of the ordinary. And I know people say that um, this is protocol for New York, but you got Paulie Malinagi on Showtime commentary saying, what the hell is this? This is ridiculous, he's not cut. So yes, he was helped, but that's not to say that he wouldn't have beaten Ortiz anyway, because I think Ortiz pretty much spent himself at the end of round number seven trying to swing for the fences and just not do shots that he should have done. He should have went to the body. But anyway, all that aside, I think Ortiz is a meaningful fight for Wilder. It's not as the best ones. I mean, Wilder's had plenty of opportunities. He could have fought either Klitschko himself, but never did. Um, he could have fought um, Joshua recently, but he didn't do it. He could have fought Alexander Povetkin, but he went with the whole Povetkin failed PED test, even though the test result showed that Povetkin was within the legal limit. Granted, he shouldn't have had anything in his damn system anyway, but facts are, you know, he chose to fight Joe Washington, Chris Ariola, Arthur Spilker, and Joan Duapa instead of all these guys. And so this is his own fault. But a fight against Tyson Fury would be a meaningful fight if Tyson Fury had been back to his best. And he quite clearly is not. He really isn't. That's why the likes of Tony Bellew and other fighters want to say, let's fight because I know I can beat you right now. But if I fight you in a year's time, maybe not. So, but Wilder's taking full advantage of it. I know people don't like hearing it, but that's the truth of it. And I know people really want to go, yeah, come on Wilder, that was a great victory. But people aren't. And I'm sorry, but they're not. They're really not. But anyway, I hope Tyson Fury does it. I hope Tyson Fury gets that win over Wilder. I think it's unlikely. But to be fair, I did say that about Klitschko. I did say that I thought that Tyson Fury would do well up until Vladimir Klitschko got into the swing of it and ultimately he'd start beating up on Tyson Fury and ultimately stopping him. But that didn't happen at all, did it? So maybe, just maybe, Tyson Fury can get a victory over Wilder. But it's not looking good for him. I've just, that's just my opinion. And I think Frank Warren talked him into making this fight just to try and make it look like he's got a better, braver fighter on his stable than what Eddie Hearn has in Joshua. But... That is what it is. So anyway, that's Anthony Joshua's statement to Sky Sports. You let me know your thoughts on it all. Click that thumbs up. And as I said before, subscribe. No reason in the world not to. Unless, of course, you're not really a boxing fan. Anyway, catch you all on the very next video.